So, I watched the White Men Can't Jump remake, and what a big, humongous surprise. The movie was trash. This is the second remake in a row that I reviewed that struggled to justify its own existence and took all the elements of the original and reshaped them to be less effective and less intelligent. Now I'm going to be spoiling this one and the original for the most part so skip the video if you haven't seen either movie. I guess I should point out stuff that I liked and there wasn't really much but I feel to give credit where credit is due. So I think the film is well shot and well directed in some places. This was directed by someone named Calmatic. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. And this is his second feature right behind another trash remake that no one asked for. And he has some good cinematography choices here and there. I really liked how he shot California. I've never been there, but it looks beautiful through his directional and shot choices. I liked some of the camera work during the basketball segments. They were shot cohesively and they just looked pretty good to me. Cinque Walls actually gave a good performance performance within the film's universe. Compared to Wesley Snipes' performance in the original, it wasn't really great, but I'll get into that later. But he was the only one that was actually trying to work with this piss crap material. So props to you, Mr. Walls, for trying. Okay, now to the bad. I hated the music, and not because I don't love the songs being played in the movie. I just love how they use the obvious songs to put in a movie like this. So expect Dreamville, Siza, Absol, Smino, Anderson Park, and Jack Harlow surprise surprise but I honestly hate movies that lean solely on pouring licensed music into the majority of the film then they go for the most stock dramatic music for scenes that obviously require it for the plot some films know how to use licensed music effectively and helps to elevate the scenes they're put in But Comatic just throws as much music from a Spotify playlist as he can, and it was getting very exhausting and tiring to listen to this. Jack Harlow was pretty bad in this movie, but I don't think anybody was expecting otherwise. He didn't seem like he didn't know he was on set until the director had to whisper to him, Hey, we're about to shoot this scene. I hope you remember your lines, man. And he would just say them instead of performing them. To be fair, his entire album, Come Home, The Kids Miss You, was better than his performance, so I guess there's that. But honestly, as I was watching him, I couldn't really blame him too much. I definitely get a sense that the writing was the biggest culprit for making his performance crappier than it already was. Uh, Vince Staples is in it. That's it. There's nothing about his character that's interesting or likable. It's just Vince Staples in a movie. I mean, I love Vince Staples as an artist, but what the crap is he doing in this movie? He had no character. Miles Bullock, never heard of him. His character's only defining trait is that he likes to eat snacks in every single scene that he's in. And these snacks clearly weren't in the shot with the label of the snacks conveniently turned to the camera for product placement or anything. That definitely wasn't intentional. Now look, I'm not expecting remakes to follow the beats of its original, but this remake completely misses the point. This is a very hollow, lifeless, boring, and superficial remake. The writing seemed like it was written for kids, written by kids, maybe AI kids. That wouldn't be a surprise. The dialogue was particularly awful because it was just expository and heavy-handed and obvious. It never felt like characters talking or people talking, but it felt like walking plot devices saying the thing they needed to say to progress the plot, but they spoke all this dialogue inorganically. There's a portion of the film where they establish a plot point, but they cut to the characters talking exactly about that. Instead of us getting to know these characters that are talking about the plot, it was very jarring and very irritating. But that's not all of the issues I had with the dialogue. This movie makes the same mistakes as another movie that I just reviewed several months back this year, and it has to do with the social themes of this movie. The characters always have to spell out the film's social themes of race in giant words in an attempt to make humorous dialogue, but it's cringe and very obvious and obnoxious. So I decided to look into who wrote this movie and wow, what do you know? <laughs> Kenya Barris is one of the writers of this movie and you can easily spot his bullshit in the dialogue. Why are black guys so obsessed with haircuts? And why do white guys not give a fuck about them? I thought we said no more race, bro. No more race, bro. The race shit is dated, bro. Everybody but you knows why dudes can hoop now. Much like his recent film, You People, he thinks characters being mouthpieces for social themes equates to good dialogue or something. The biggest issue is that it's constant as f 
The original had dialogue like this too, but it wasn't overblown and unsubtle. The characters still came first and many times they did have socially themed driven dialogue. It felt natural and spontaneous through the characters, but never felt forced like in this movie. I was literally struggling to get through this movie, but the dialogue was so bad. I paused it several times and was contemplating on even if I wanted to keep watching this thing because the movie felt like honest, literal torture. I really don't understand how Kenya Barris keeps getting work and how people People think that he's a good writer when he shoved two shitty movies this year with the worst writing so far this year he's only good at TV writing because you have a limited amount of time to flesh these things out so it doesn't feel like you're lectured to at the expense of telling a story but for some weird reason Kenya Barris doesn't do this in his TV series grownish and blackish the writing in both shows is very good and this also includes the dialogue so what in God's name makes him write this way for movies instead of transferring his strengths from TV to film I, I don't know maybe he just sucks at writing movies you know one of the biggest issues i have with this movie overall had to be with how they handled the story and the characters like i said remaking something does warrant different interpretations of the same material but understanding the essence of what makes those elements work is how you separate a good remake from a bad one and this remake definitely took everything that was genuine and engaging about the original and watered it down to generic boring typical trash the relationship between jeremy and tatiana was very 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 generic and boring now the original had the characters billy and gloria but come on let's be real it's the same characters the relationship in the original actually had depth and layers to it they felt like people talking about how they're going to solve their problems and we're experiencing these moments with them if i have a problem you're not supposed to solve it men always make the mistake of thinking they can solve a woman's problem we're given insight into what their dynamic is like. We see their ups and downs during the relationship and their chemistry feels incredibly natural on a consistent freaking basis. The end of the film really shows how they've grown and changed throughout the film. Billy learns that he needs to make changes for himself after he lost Gloria, possibly indefinitely. And Gloria even hints this earlier in the film with her dialogue. Sometimes when you win, you really lose. And sometimes when you lose, you really win. And sometimes when you win or lose, you actually tie. And we see how that plays out when Billy decides to bet the money that Gloria gave him for his future. Billy is a flawed character, and losing Gloria means he has a future to gain from this lesson. So what's going on in this movie? Well, Jeremy and Tatiana are just spouting exposition about things they need to do in the plot. Jeremy wants his knees fixed, and Tatiana is a dancer that's getting work every now and then, but it doesn't pay very much. There's nothing being developed. We get no insight on their relationship. The film doesn't seem to give a f about challenging their relationship. The film doesn't even seem too invested in who they are as characters. It's like, ah, let's just get to the next plot point, pretty please. Okay, the movie just wants us to know how much they love each other, and that's nice and all, but it, it, there's nothing there. This goes for Kamal and Imani also. Their relationship feels very generic and one-dimensional, while Sydney and Rhonda's relationship did not. I like on the original, they communicate that the relationship may seem better than Billy and Gloria's, but throughout the course of the film, we learn that they're struggling just as equally but in their own way. The film communicates that the contrast between two couples also has its comparisons and both main characters want to have the best lives for themselves and for those they care about. The remake really chooses to just go the generic route like giving Jeremy a happily ever after ending with him marrying his girlfriend without him learning anything or growing from any of these experiences. So pretty much he gets exactly what he wants. Another huge glaring problem with this movie is that the struggles of these characters never feel like it shapes or develops them unlike in the original obviously the conflicts the characters facing the remake are just personal goals that they want to achieve jeremy wants his knees fixed like i said before and kamal wants to be famous again or something i don't remember jeremy is selling cleansing products but for some reason that plot point is so passive that it never has an impact on the main narrative i'd also like to add how terrible the nissan effects were when his knee cracks <laughs> It's this annoying, loud, obvious sound effect that reminds you that this is a movie that doesn't feel like a natural, real world sound. So the audience doesn't really get to feel the impact of the sound through more natural sounding effects. It was loud so that we could sympathize incredibly hard with Jeremy and be constantly reminded of his personal conflict of his knees. Like, good directing, dude. Kamal's father dies at some point, but it's very sappy, expected, and very cliched. His father tells him sad scene dialogues 
stuff that just reinforces that this movie is going exactly where you know it's gonna go. Like I said, I thought that Synchro Walls was trying, but what separates Wesley Snipes from Walls is that Snipes adds so much energy and charisma to his role. His character was arrogant and cocky, but it was the high that he's struggling through his own economic position. And what was revealed was that he was a good friend that was loyal to Billy regardless. And Snipes was incredibly hilarious throughout the film. Okay, chump. Hey, look, the sun even shines on a dog's ass some days. Anybody can win the lottery. Hey, oh, 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 uh, that shit went out like a scud missile. Oh, it hurts. Oh, it hurts. It hurts so bad. Hey, I'll hold it. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> he ain't going nowhere, baby. The bakery ain't open yet. Let's go. He felt like a freaking person, while Kamal is just this stoic, moody, pissy character. I would have preferred him to be cocky and arrogant and hilarious to hide his insecurities, and then his insecurities over time envelop and give him depth, but no. He's just a one note, static, boring, angry character. The chemistry between Jack Harlow and Sequel Walls was very artificial all the way through, unlike in the original where their friendship was put through the test due to the circumstances of their life. Sometimes they turn on each other, other times times they work together and by the end their friendship is solidified because they lost something but also gained something. Sydney's house was robbed, Gloria left Billy, but what they gained was a stronger understanding and friendship from each other. And that's why I love the ending basketball scene so much in this movie. Everything was building up to this moment and I really appreciate how them winning the tournament wasn't actually a resolving factor for their problems being solved. But helping Gloria achieve her dreams of being on Jeopardy, now that was different. And the final basketball segment was like a solidification of their friendship and their growth even if like before some things had to come with the cost i mean that's great stuff to me but here they fight every now and then and it feels contrived and only happens what like once that like they only have like one conflict with each other it's never consistent it doesn't really do much to develop in this characters so like what's the point of it being in the movie they win the competition at the end and that's solving all of their problems i mean wow how effective and resonating jeremy does the dunk like billy did but there's nothing to build up to it at all. In the original, Billy practiced and failed multiple times. It was actually earned in the third act. Here, it looked way too super easy for him to dunk it, and then the film is treating it as if it's like some super big moment for him or something. Like, how cheap can you be? And lastly, the original film was successful because of the clever, witty banter that felt extremely natural throughout the characters. While here, the film for some reason takes itself far more seriously than it needed to be because Ron Sultan knew what he wanted to focus on when he wrote the movie and it wasn't just social issues, Kenya Barris. Stop using a pre-existing story to preach social issues while simultaneously misunderstanding what made the original good in the first place. Okay, so I wrote a letter to Mr. Barris. I know that he was one of three writers, but I feel like he needs to hear this the most. So, <clears throat> dear Mr. Barris, thank you for ruining everything that made the original film good. Thank you for misunderstanding the relationship between Billy and Gloria. Thank you for making both Jeremy and Kamal very boring and uninteresting in their contrast to Billy and Sydney. Thank you for pointlessly making Jeremy's knee condition literally integral to the film's title and vice versa. Thank you for weaponizing a good story as a mouthpiece for your social views. Thank you for being a very shitty writer that pissed me off with your movies twice in the same year. I hope you learn from this experience and if your ego doesn't allow you to reevaluate your writing when it comes to film, well I guess I'll have a heap of content coming for every crappy film that you start shelling out with your writing credit on it. So have a good day sir, I'll see you in the future. So yeah, this movie sucked. It was irritating, it was a dumb movie that no one asked for, and what else did you expect? So uh, one star. Alright, peace.